We're live. Good morning. Welcome to Marketing Over Coffee. I'm John Wall. I'm Christopher Penn. And coming to you today, this is uh, Chris probably has the cl countdown clock on his desk, a vacation <laughs> uh, dead ahead. Absolutely. So uh, looking forward to uh, actually getting off the grid for the first time in literally probably 15 years. Uh, I'm going up to northern Maine where there is no internet access. I mean, you know, there are regular hotels where we're staying at a, a cabin on a lake. So there's no internet access, nothing hardwired. Uh, and my mobile provider does not even have a tower within 100 miles of the, uh, the place I'm staying. So it is going to be totally, uh, totally off the books here. That's great. Interruption free. That's a real vacation for a change. It is a real vacation. I'm going to be working on my next book, actually. Cool. Very cool. Anything you want to tip on that, or do you want to keep that under wraps? It's going to be, I, I don't have a final title on it yet, but what it's going to be about is called Algorithmic Thinking How to Think Like a Machine. Cool. All right. That sounds good. Well, and on the top of, of books, too, we had breaking news just literally before we came on. We both got notice from Amazon about 15 minutes ago about uh, Kindle Unlimited. Which, this is like one of those things, I just, I'm like, why didn't anybody think of that like 10 years ago, you know, or at least two years ago? Because, you know, <laughs> subscribe to music, everybody's like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. And the cloud, subscribe to apps and all this other stuff, but they've actually come out with subscribe to Kindle Books. So if I get it, you pay the flat rate and you can take as many books down as you want, but basically switching it to a subscription service instead of buying. It's just like this thing called a, like a library. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's just crazy enough to work. <laughs> if, uh, yeah, that is totally true, isn't it? Like you support the local library and you get free books that you can take. So that's, exactly. <laughs> that's interesting, and and of course it is. It's all. Yeah, isn't it true that could actually work a lot better for authors and publishers because, as we know, uh, there's a huge check chunk of people that check out books and don't actually read them. You know, now yep. there's no friction you know it's, it's kind of the classic thing where you go to the library and you pull out 10 books and you read the two you like and you give up on the others but um, so I think there can be a lot of money made on this side. I did note there that in order for you to qualify for your payment your book has to be at least 10 percent read. Oh really oh yeah. so somebody's got to make it past the first x number of pages that's interesting so now that boy that kind of raises the bar for um, if you've got one of those barticles that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> good for 20 pages and you stretch it to 200 you better put the interesting stuff up front which you could you could just do that put the interesting stuff in the first three chapters oh totally totally but yeah it's it, I thought that was really interesting that they're saying look you know the effort because if you think about it there's that's a, a very subtle incentive because Amazon uses typically the first chapter or so for preview and stuff like that so they they have they're basically reinforcing the money to say hey you got to make it good enough to buy. All right. Well, that's interesting. So, uh, yeah, of course, writing then, of course, becoming more important than ever. And whether you're an occasional scribe, part-time wordsmith, or an acclaimed content creator, writing is a skill that every marketer needs to master. You can turn yourself into a lean, mean writing machine with Marketing Profs University's Marketing Writing Boot Camp, these 16 classes available online 24-7 with one goal in mind to make you a better marketing writer. You can visit mprofs.com slash coffee. Use the promo the promo code, use the promo code COFFEE when you enroll to save $200. So that's uh, real money in your pocket that we're giving you just for listening. Imagine that. So that's a wonderful thing. Uh, okay. So, uh, of course, though, on the, uh, so that's on the cool side. On the more painful side, 18,000 cut at Microsoft. A huge uh, new CEO kind of putting a stamp on things over there. What's, uh, what's your thoughts about that? Yeah, most of it's Nokia. Most of it, they're like, yeah, you know, the whole uh, you know, Android uh, phone, yeah, we're not going to let you do that anymore. So it's uh, it, the new phone's going to be, uh, I guess, uh, a new Windows phone. And they basically said, yeah, we're, um, we're, we're pretty much done with this division. It's it, the, the thing that got the most press, though, was the absolutely horrifyingly bad way the announcement was made, where they basically went on this, like, 10-paragraph long email about strategic repositioning and stuff. And at the end, they didn't actually tell people whether or not they were keeping their jobs. Yeah, you know, it's funny. This totally – in fact, this, this would be a good lead-in. Then I, It reminded me of the interview with Simon Sinek a couple months back talking about, you know, a big portion of his – uh, treatise on leadership is that layoffs are like one of the worst things that have happened in the past three decades to the industry because it literally just shows that the com you know companies could care less about these employees they're totally disposable 
And um, yeah, and this was just a classic example, like you said, of like, okay, so an employee reads that and they get to the end of three pages worth of stuff and they're still left asking, okay, so what, do I have a job here or not? What's the story? Exactly. And that's the thing is that at the end of this, they say, you know, many, many uh, jobs are going to be repositioned and we'll be making announcements in the next six months. Like, yeah, that's, that's an awesome way to help morale out there. <laughs> Yeah, well, but I do have to give them some credit, though. At least there, there were two good things. One was because even an article I had seen said it was going to be over the next year. So yeah. now you're talking about 10% attrition over a year. That's going to happen normally, so that's not a big deal at all. Um, and then they did say of the 18K, 12.5 due to Nokia. So at least uh, if you don't work in Nokia, suddenly your odds are significantly better. That's true. That's you true. Know, even still, they, I, I think that announcement certainly could have gone a little better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, they could. Well, but I think on, then on the flip side, though, even though saying it's spread over a year, I would imagine the goal is they'll get that hit from the street where usually the street totally gives you some love in the first week after you throw an announcement like that, even though the job layoffs aren't happening at that point. So who knows, maybe that... Uh, yeah, it makes you wonder whose uh, options are, are vesting. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's due for a payout before uh, summer retirement kicks in. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, we have an article. This one cracked me up too. Like Twitter making a big deal about thirty percent reach for free, um, which uh, you know that strikes me as an article just saying that. Well, unlike Facebook, we'll at least buy you dinner before we uh, have our way. Um, you know, it's saying that like you get thirty percent for free. You know, uh, we're going to take seventy percent of the audience you earned and charge you for it, right? I mean, isn't that what that says if you look at it from the other side? Yeah, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> to their credit, they they do say that the uh, the algorithms they have are not intentionally penalizing you. It's just that you know, if you have if you're following more than fifty people, <clears throat> it's tough because it, that you know the news stream goes by when you're when you're following thousands of people, or you you'll be lucky to see anything uh, unless you have specially curated lists and stuff. So. Um, uh, yeah, it's thirty percent. It, certainly better than Facebook's current zero percent, which is uh, about what I've been seeing. I've uh, on all of the Facebook pages that I have access to. I mean, I'm seeing at at best one percent uh, organic reach. It's it's completely pay for play. And <clears throat> some folks are saying um, even even at a personal level now they're seeing their personal organic reach declining. Um, I, one one friend on Facebook who, know, he hasn't given me permission to say his name, but I was been doing trying to like uh, just do charitable fundraising, like yeah, I'm doing this this bike ride thing, and he's like I get like a, you know a like two likes per post where it used to be you know 50 or 60. So Facebook is uh, continuing to turn the screws. I said yeah, I mean if you if you're promoting this thing, dude, I'm sorry, it's basically you, just get out your wallet. Yeah, yeah, and push it to go. That's very interesting. I hadn't heard anything about that going down the personal level. Um, I did see some stuff, and it, we, I think we mentioned it last week too, about prices you know, being doubled and tripled along certain stretches of whatever you're paying. So, yeah, definitely, like you said, putting the screws to it. All right, speaking of putting the screws, we had uh, Danny Sullivan in an article. Um, there was an initial article, I forget what the original one was on, but on Google, you know, alleging that Google is screwing Yelp. Uh, you know, giving them crummy results. Danny Sullivan has actually did some testing and said it was uh, the other way around. And then a similar article too about uh, Google not getting as good movie results. There was it was alleging that they were getting slammed. And uh, again, uh, Danny Sullivan's group doing a little bit of testing and finding out that it was just that Google's movie results are not as good as uh, Bing. That there's stuff that gets missed over on Google as opposed to on the Bing side of things. Yeah, which, I don't know about you, is that, that's not hugely impactful to me because I very rarely ever go check for movies on Google, period. I mean, I don't go to movies personally. but Right, right, you go on there. Well, it's, um, the one thing that I thought was interesting, too, I wonder if uh, Bing has more of a human hand in it. You know, I could totally see Google just setting up, you know, being completely automated, so last-minute changes not even being included. But, um, yeah, just part of the... Uh, the tectonic shift on, on those big geopolitical wars of, uh, especially it's a fun to watch Yelp and Google, you know, how those two flesh out because there's, you know, just been complaints on every side from that type of thing. Yeah. Speaking of <clears throat> Google things, uh, this is uh, this is brand new, came out literally um, yesterday. This is the new Google Analytics app for iOS. So they have finally released an official app, and I got to tell you, it's good. I mean, it's a really it's slick. They've got the entire interface in you know, of Google Analytics in here in a very nice, beautiful mobile format. Uh, they got real time monitoring, and unlike some of the other apps that are out there for uh, Google Analytics, this one lets you do just about everything that you want. I mean, even in here. 
here you have like the ability to do segmentation, the your your different market segments and stuff right from inside the app. So I gotta you know hats off to Google. They they did a, a really really nice job with uh, with the app, which I, I guess you know everyone expected them to do. Um, but all your stats, everything in here, uh, audience behaviors, conversion, your conversion data. So if you haven't uh, haven't gone out to uh, the App Store and, and hit it up, you definitely want to go and and get a get a hold of it. Oh yeah, that's I had missed that one. So that's yeah, that's excellent because you know pretty much every marketer that's running Google Analytics is a stats junkie and wants to just kind of check things out here or there. So that's that's fantastic. I know. Uh, uh, yeah, I've just been checking reports via phone all the time now. Some of the apps are actually very good now, which is nice to have things ramping up that way. Um, let's see. Oh, I had a great story, too. This is a fun one about uh, L'Oreal model. So, you know, the women's cosmetics L'Oreal. They had um, a woman that was found at the uh, World Cup. In fact, we joked last week again about honey shots, you know, this thing that the Monday Night Football created where you find the pretty girl in the crowd, right? Well, this girl got you know, 10 million follows or whatever, and so L'Oreal signs her as the model and brings her on board, and there's a lot of fanfare. And then suddenly somebody finds deep in a Facebook or Twitter feed or somewhere a picture of this woman with her rifle having just landed a, a gazelle. <laughs> and next thing you know, that's it. She's no longer employed. She had her 12 minutes of fame got cut short. But uh, I just thought that was a great story to see. Uh, uh, you know, L'Oreal going big on no animal cruelty, and uh, unfortunately that picture not lining up with their brand <laughs> positioning. Uh, Real-time marketing, it giveth and it taketh. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, let's see. We have, um, oh, all right, uh, talking about apps and apps crossing over. You had mentioned kind of offhand quick mention of Ingress last week, this Android game, which is very popular, just hopped over to iOS. So I made the mistake. Oh, yeah, there we go, screenshot coming up of that. <laughs> um, I made the mistake of downloading it myself and was immediately sucked in uh, <laughs> to this game. So it, it's uh, it's for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's it's kind of a cross between a capture the flag and um, uh, it's like a role playing geo- game. Yeah, role playing and geocaching. You know, yeah. it's, it's through the phone. It's tied to the real world. So you literally have to go to you know you go to the center of town and you hit the major landmarks to capture those flags. And then yeah, there's this huge gigantic sci-fi backstory that they've been building since it's been on Android for over a year where they have there's videos that come out every week and there's meetups and just all this insane stuff. All right, but so the first the most important question, um have you played have you have you stuck with it or did you try it and ditch it or where are you at? I'm I'm still pl- messing with it. You know, there's there are a couple of portals that are like you know there's one literally at the front door of the office here. So uh, it's not you know the, there there's not significant hardship in actually going to these places because there's so many of these portals. Like there's another portal probably like two minutes walking distance from my house. So it's like I can I can you know walk there or you know put you know when I'm going out for an evening exercise walk or something, yeah you know hit the portals. Um, I actually can't wait to go to the San Francisco and New York offices of my company because there's like 20 portals within uh, probably a quarter of a mile at the San Francisco office because the Embarcadero and all that stuff. So that, that's when I'm going to see uh, uh, how the game actually you know, really ramps up. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's where you'll get into crazy stuff where when you're attacking stuff, you'll be actually blowing up multiple, you know, uh, portal resonators. But not to geek out too much, the big <laughs> question too, are you blue or green? Which way did you go? Uh, I went green. All right. So marketing over coffee is officially the enlightened team. So it's... <laughs> Play ingress, go green. Tell us about it, and we will lead the green revolution. Exactly. Well, I I just figured, you know, I, I went off of uh, lightsaber colors. The uh, folks with the green lightsabers generally had their stuff together a little better than the folks with the blue lightsabers. <laughs> That's a good way to, to. I was I was going for it. They kind of pitched the blue as, you know, the rebels, the the underdog, and so. I was like, well, just be contrarian. I'll play green. Maybe it'll be a little more interesting. And the thing that blew me away is I ended up being the rebel. Like this is. A complete blue bastion. Blue. I am living under a blue cloud here. So <laughs> I, I literally am like the one-man rebel struggling for survival. <laughs> nice. Uh, and it's fun too. Interesting here that this is a college town. So it's obvious that the college kids have totally locked down everything on campus. And now it's the summer and nobody's here. And I'm like wandering around through the empty Death Star. Basically, <laughs> is my uh, is who the hell I am. So all right, we're gonna, we will get off that. We, this is totally geek stuff, and it's. Uh, yeah, it totally it has all the cult signs, you know. I've, you just get sucked in immediately and 
want to talk about it and read about it and learn about it. So, Yeah, I mean, admittedly, though, if you want to see a great integration of real life and marketing and, and digital, this is a great way to do it. I'm waiting for the first, like, restaurant chain that manages to slap portals, you know, in front of all of its locations. Yeah, that's cool. And the other one that is just such a slam dunk that's going to happen is Google Glass or even a, a better VR system like, um, like Epson uses where, you know, you have the game tied into the glasses and you actually see stuff jumping out of the portals. I have no doubt that, you know, right now it's like capture the flag, but as soon as uh, visual becomes, a, you know, gets to be affordable, there's going to be VR fighting amongst factions and there's going to be stuff jumping out of this portal for everybody to kill. It's going to be... Uh, it, it just so you can see that progression happening, it's going to be. Oh yeah, yeah. Once it once the, the Oculus technology or something gets a little bit better, a little more portable and less hazardous to operate in the real world, uh, it's going to be uh, that that will be gaming. And and hey, you know, if if we actually get to a point where um, people can be interacting in in the real environment and you know moving around and stuff, it might help with that whole American fitness thing. Yeah, no. A lot of people have been talking about that. Yeah, they play that up every time they talk about the game too. Yeah, I don't know. I've, walk 10 kilometers in the past week just messing around with this so it does make a difference of course i also have become totally lazy bastard and found you know the best driving route where i can <laughs> drive by um, drive by landmarks but, optimization uh, it's what's yes. good in there <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely uh, let's see i have a fun link to facebook cover pages a a uh, young lady that's done some fun photoshopping where if you've seen these, you actually take your profile picture and then you've got that big masthead on Facebook and there's people that kind of integrate the two. And she has herself in a bunch of TV shows and uh, cartoons and things like that. So that's kind of something fun to play with if you want to drive some traffic. <laughs> uh, we've got, oh, uh, a link to a PDF to, uh, white paper talking about sequenced pitch beating a single call to action kind of, um, you know, for people that get it, that seems intuitively obvious, but for those who are running the same ad on all channels all the time, maybe you want to check this out. And the idea of having three or four ads in a series is much better than just having the click here to buy now every place. Um, so that's kind of a, a good thing to see. Yeah, I'm actually going to try uh, something along those lines next week while I'm on vacation. I've got uh, I'm taking 25 of the uh, the most popular posts from the last couple of years and queuing them up as reruns in social next week to see if anyone even notices that I'm on vacation. <laughs> oh, that was interesting. Okay, so I, that's funny you mentioned that because I ditched an article that was on the bubble about reruns, talking about the same thing, saying that reruns are all the rage now. If you literally take anything that was hot you know, a year and a half ago and you run it again, you will probably do just as well second time around. Uh, exactly. So we're going to watch very carefully to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, interesting. So, well, and then the, so the, yeah, you talk about optimization. Then the thing you do is you look at that and you just set up so that your popular stuff runs every third week and now you're only doing uh, two thirds of the work you were before and just recycling and that, you know, or whatever your cycle is. Yeah. Um, but you can uh, definitely crank up your output with no problem. Um, and, of course, optimizing your workflow. Another great thing to do is to get your email letter tuned and fired out with what counts. We've worked with all the major email service providers. And for marketing over coffee, you use what counts, superior deliver. Man, I'm just struggling with the promos today here. Superior deliverability design and reporting. For MOC listeners, you can get their free white paper, 57 Tips to Grow Your Email List, which Mr. Penn was actually involved with. It will lead to your enlightenment and is available at www.whatcounts.com slash coffee. Check that out over there. Uh, what do we have? A special a SpaceX launch? I, SpaceX is like, this was their ninth launch. I didn't, they're, they're like putting stuff in space all the time. They put up a bunch of satellites this run up. So uh, between uh, the Tesla and uh, SpaceX, Elon Musk is becoming the man of the new century, I think. Well, yeah. And when you have that much, uh, speaking of Tesla, there's going to be a new uh, Tesla, too. Uh, uh, supposedly a $35,000 version, which, uh, I, you know, if they actually get that down and there's uh, conclusive proof that it works in a New England winter, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I might actually go for it. But yeah, that, that, the last part's the kicker. I mean, electric cars are great in Los Angeles and San Francisco. Uh, when it's minus 28 out, I wanna, I'm a little curious to see how well they work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that and the same... Well, it's interesting. Now that I think about that, at first I thought this was a problem, but maybe it wouldn't be. Um, you have no gearing. You know, it's an electric motor, so it's literally you just push the pedal and it keeps keeps spinning up until you get to your, you know, eighteen thousand RPMs or whatever ungodly speed it can do. So, 
um, driving in snow is a big deal. But then again, you could totally have the winter optimized program that, you know, that manages acceleration and gearing optimized for snow. And the mind blowing thing with that, that I only realized after they did one of their um, recalls is that when they do a recall, they push it out over the web and all the cars get it that same day. I mean, if it's something like adjusting the handling or transmission or whatever, they, nobody brings it to the shop. They just plug it in and when the wireless is in range, boom, the car gets updated. All of them do. So it's pretty um, definitely game changing. Yeah, it totally comes down to right now, can you afford to buy one? That's the big problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At $35,000, that's uh, a lot more reasonable. So it should be. Now, my concern though is. Um, there are no current good battery technologies that store power long term in cold weather. I mean, the, you know, if you want your batteries to last after the charge, you refrigerate them. But charging them and having them retain a charge uh, in cold weather is, is has always been the problem. Um, even with hybrid cars, if you look at a hybrid car, in the summer you're going to clock 50 miles a ga- per gallon. In the winter you're doing around 40 because the the efficiency of batteries just drops as the temperature goes below 35 degrees. Uh huh. I can't handle. It. But it is. They have made all kinds of uh, leaps with that. I know because I saw that they were issuing. Um, they're they're going to be upgrading the batteries in the original Teslas. You know the ones that were the Lotus Coupe design there. Mm. And I, it was something like doubling the mileage with with, with these new batteries. So, nice. Yeah, they they have definitely cranked it up. And of course, you know they want to keep those guys happy because I think they paid eighty grand or maybe more than that even for that first round. But yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so flashback to old crummy technology. I just had a funny video of kids from today reacting to the original Game Boy when they get thrown a Game Boy, which was some some wonderful comments about how I feel sorry for the people in the past and um, you know them just wondering why the Game Boy is so huge and why it looks like an old cell phone and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that out over there. Um, before we bail, too, I have something. This is good for folks that have made it through the whole stretch here, a special offer for you guys. Uh, Chris and I have both talked about the Oratium training, the presentation skills training, and Tamson McMahon, our friend, actually, is part of the organization that does those. They're doing a session in Chicago coming up August 6th and 7th, and if you are an MOC listener and a fan, uh, you can use the code CHICAGO. That will get you $500 off the $1,500 cost. So a ton of saving. In fact, I'm going to throw an extra buck on top of that so you can get it for $9.99. <laughs> that everybody loves. You'll have to enter the Chicago code. That'll get you $500 off. Tell me I'll get you the extra buck. Um, but uh, we, we want to do that. Yeah, the, I can't say enough about this training. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're totally kind of doing her a favor and throwing this out there because the training is fantastic. I mean, we've both done keynotes all over the place and, you know, spoken to all kinds of crowds and people. And I, I went in cold. I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll pick up two or three things, you know, kind of the, the standard you wrote earlier last week about trade shows. You know, you kind of, after you've been doing stuff for a number of years, you go to trade shows and you don't expect to learn too much. You're going to network because you're, you're already keeping up with what's going on. But this was like, mind-blowing stuff. It definitely changed the whole paradigm for me, and it's worth yeah. doing. I strongly yeah. recommend it. And again, 500 bucks off, so uh, you want to jump on that. August 6th and 7th. I think there's only four seats available. They're, they're, not, you know, they're kind of keeping this limited. So the first four win, and if you jump on it, tell us about it. We'd love to hear about it. Yep. The downside is it will completely ruin all conferences for you from here on out, because you'll be watching people's presentations going, no, you're doing it wrong! <laughs> Isn't yeah? That was the thing that totally just rocked me. Was at the end of the the day and a half that we did, then they showed a couple presentations of people who were <laughs> professionals, and you literally have a checklist of ten things, and you're like, nope, they didn't do three, five, eight, seven, and you you know you totally see why their presentations suck, and you can explain it. That was the big thing. It was a lot of stuff that was you know I intuitively knew, but then you, now suddenly you have a uh, a procedure and a, a way to codify this stuff. It reminded me a lot of uh, Covey's Seven Habits. Yep. You know, it's like you read that book, and if you've been successful and kind of and working well, suddenly you read that book, and you're like, oh my god, this is why things work right. Like these are the patterns that I follow, and this is why it's successful. But you have a framework to explain it and to teach. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, it's a big hit. All right. Well, that's good. We've been running along, and you've got to get on the bus for vacation. Actually, I will be bailing out later next week too. So we've got. Um, Marcus Nelson will be on an interview next week, so we'll roll that while we're gone. Um, and uh, I don't know, anything else on the calendar before you make your escape? Nope. Um, we're doing a webinar in August, but uh, and speaking at the Martech conference in August, but um, we'll have some more details when we get back from uh, vacation. All right, that sounds great. And to you out there, if you're taking a vacation, hopefully you're listening to this on a way 
to somewhere fun or warm or on the water. Um, enjoy your time off. We will catch up with you when you get back. And until then, enjoy the coffee. Enjoy the coffee.